So I'm Jake Rubin, I'm the founder and CEO of Haptex, and uh, we make the world's most realistic haptic gloves. We've been working on this for uh, about six or seven years now, and uh, we've developed a technology platform based on microfluidics that allows us to deliver extremely detailed and realistic haptic feedback. We have over 130 points of feedback um, on our gloves across your hand that give you a sensation of uh, touch, including motion, shape, texture, weight, um, and resistance, everything you'd feel in real life. So we're, we're showing obviously our DK1 gloves um, and uh, we're, we're talking about the wonderful design and training use cases around those. We're also showing our uh, brand new tactile telerobot system. So just a few days ago we announced um, our uh, Converge Robotics Group um, Consortium, which is comprised of uh, Haptex and a few other experts in robotics and sensing technology, including Shadow Robotics who makes uh, the world's most advanced robotic, dexterous robotic hands, and Syntouch that makes extremely sensitive um, robotic sensors. It's the world's first tactile telerobot. So it's the first system that allows you to feel what a robot's feeling anywhere in the world and effectively transport a human skill set um, into a robot anywhere in the world. So this is definitely not a consumer product today, as you might guess from the giant robot. Um, it's very much focused on enterprise. So. For our VR gloves, uh, our primary application areas are uh, design and training. So we've uh, made a number of announcements with some wonderful companies in the automotive industry like Nissan who are using our gloves for uh, design to help them save millions of dollars and design better cars by being able to feel their, uh, their models early in the design process and try and interact with many more iterations. We're working also with aerospace companies, architecture companies, and then we're also doing a lot on the training side. So we're working with the U.S. military to train combat medics. Um, we're working in uh, industry, work in energy, really anywhere where motor skills are critically important. Where having the sight and the sound and some controllers in VR is not enough, someone needs to practice a task hands-on over and over and over again to be able to build those motor skills. And as for the Telerobot, it's a little bit of an earlier product. It's still primarily a prototype. We are offering that for sale to a very limited set of organizations that are we want to get on the ground floor of this, this groundbreaking technology. So the primary application area right now is the Avatar X Prize. Um, that is a $10 million multi-year prize um, sponsored by uh, ANA, the Japanese airline, to uh, build the world's first true full-body human avatar, something out of science fiction. Um, and we're working, we're, uh, we're working directly with the prize team there um, and providing the gloves and the robotic system to allow them to meet their goals along with other companies that are providing other components like uh, locomotion solutions or 3D vision solutions and the goal is to bring that all together into a true full body humanoid avatar in the not so distant future. Um, we're also working with companies in industries like oil and gas, nuclear, energy, um, uh, military areas where it's very dangerous or impossible to place a human in a certain situation but you need human motor skills. Um, so that, that's really a key area for us right now. So I think there's room in the glove market for multiple different companies at different price points. We have good relationships with a lot of the other guys here. I'd recommend if you haven't seen them, Sense Glove is, is over there. Uh, we know those guys well. They make a good product as well. We think of ourselves as the high end of the market. Uh, we have a product that gives enterprise, demanding enterprise customers the highest possible level of fidelity. It comes in a form factor that's a little bit larger and a price point that's a little bit higher than some of our competitors, but the, uh, the technology is fundamentally more capable. Uh, on, the, on the lower end of the market, there are some options either for lower end enterprise applications that are smaller, more wireless, but only provide a small fraction of what we do in terms of fidelity and feature set. And there are some companies that are working ultimately on bringing something to the consumer market. I haven't personally seen a compelling consumer priced glove yet. I just don't think the market's quite there yet. Um, but I do think that that will happen. I think everybody in the industry, it's our goal ultimately to build that Ready Player One glove. All the features we have in our current cutting edge prototype at a fraction of the price in a wireless small form factor that you can slip on and you know jump into the Oasis. And that's not quite here yet. You know, every time I talk about this, I make sure to mention that we're not a consumer product today because we have, you know, we're lucky enough to have a lot of fans out there in the VR community and we, we love the consumer VR community and we do ultimately intend to serve that community first through location-based entertainment in the, in the very near future. Um, you'll be able to, to try our gloves at arcades and theme parks and then in the a little bit more distant future. We would expect either through uh, direct marketing or through um, a licensing agreement with another company that already makes VR equipment for the consumer market to be able to offer our technology at some level to, uh, to the consumer market. Thanks for listening. For more information, you can go to haptex.com, H-A-P-T-X.com.